Hello, my name is Josh Atkinson, and you have once again stumbled upon my portrait painting YouTube channel. Today, uh, we will be working on this lovely lady, this little, little young lady, which if you'd seen the movie that this is from, you'd understand what a clever pun that was. Um, I will be continuing my journey toward, toward um, rougher textural, no, textural paintings and Pennywise. I don't know. He's, he's spooky. I just wanted him to be here today for, for emotional support. All right, so let's do the time lapse. So this is the source image, and and this is upside down failed attempt at Marilyn Monroe from uh, a while back before I knew what I was doing. Painting right over that with the Andrew Loomis circle, kind of. Um, the subject's eyes are downcast, so they are south of the middle of the circle. And, uh, and yeah, so the subject is this old lady character. I don't exactly understand her significance, but she's from this movie from the 70s called Don't Look Now, which is thought of as a horror movie classic. Uh, I grew up renting literally everything from Blockbuster in the horror section. My mom was very cool about me watching absolutely like anything. So I'd seen all the all the big ones, but I didn't see this Don't Look Now until a couple years ago, and I I didn't understand it. <laughs> I, I don't really understand why it's horror uh, feels like the wrong category. I don't know what the right category would be, but I don't want to spoil anything, but anyway, we, we meet this old lady and it's a big shock. It's a big surprise, but, um, but I just didn't, I don't know. I didn't understand what it all meant, but anyway, it's a cool, uh, image. Um, I love any opportunity to just go crazy with like a really bright red. Um, I'm using cadmium red to like block it in, but then at the end of the painting for like brighter highlighty areas, I use cadmium red light, which was something I learned about maybe a year ago. And it's such a game changer. Like if you've ever struggled with painting a, a red rose or just, just something vividly red, you add white to it to make the highlight and suddenly you've got pink or at least a desaturated red. Cadmium red light is, is a game changer. But it's a cool source image because there's foreshortening. We're seeing her from below. And I hadn't really played with foreshortening in, I mean, a very long time. I can't remember the last time. So I was not sure how this would go. But the really exciting thing for me about this painting was that I got the likeness fairly early. I've got a reasonable likeness already. And I was just, like, bored. I was like, okay, this is good. And it sounds like a first world problem to be able to get a good likeness and, and just feel that that's not good enough. But that is how I felt. I was like, I want to do something a bit more interesting. So you can see I've added some like grayed out blues into her skin on the forehead, the nose, the, uh, the cheek to the right, if you're looking at it head on, which obviously you are. Um, and I had some, some reds thrown in, um, on her skin, you know, trying to do what I've been doing in the most recent paintings that I've posted here on YouTube, where I'm not blending, uh, I'm having soft edges, I'm leaving them pretty rough, I'm throwing in colors that do not, uh, I'm not fusing them seamlessly into the flesh, um, I'm trying to create a harmony that you, um, that is still, still feels chaotic, something that looks, I'm not gonna say like Impressionism, but more like, it, it, it looks more interesting if you're 10 or 20 feet away, and then you come up close and you see the elements that allow it to look realistic at that distance. So at the end of the painting, um, having been bored with just getting a good likeness, I add some some highlight strokes into the skin. And I, I guess I've already put in the more expressive colors in the skin. And it just kind of like, it made me super happy. I was just extremely fulfilled with how it how it turned out and every painting since this one uh and there have been five or six um it's gone even further in, in that direction of just uh 
of um, expressiveness and choppy brushstrokes. And you can see I'm throwing purples into her skin. Um, and I don't know if I've said this recently, but there's no actual black pigment in this painting. I, I just make a black out of mixing burnt umber and ultramarine blue, um, just because that allows you to control whether you want it to be warm uh, black, quote unquote, or cool, quote unquote, black, just by adding more of the brown or more of the blue. So I tend to lean cool. Um, and here I definitely wanted it to be cool so that the red would pop because it's so <laughs> like extremely warm. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm going on this stylistic journey <laughs> that you may have seen. Last week I painted Mitch McConnell and I had, I found really fun expressive brush strokes, but there was like absolutely no color in, in the man's skin. So I found this image and I was like, let's play with that. You can see like the, the upper lip is very red, the lower lip, I'm leaving it blue. Like, I don't think I, I don't think I adjusted too much at this point and I'm throwing the blue elsewhere. I'm, I'm, it, it, it's, it's interesting when you, it's blue, but when you see it in the context of human skin, your brain says, oh, well, it's gray. It's, it's something more plausible, something naturally occurring on human flesh. And so I'm testing the boundaries of that. Um, and I'm testing the boundaries of how much do I need to refine and blend here. Now I'm working on her, uh, <laughs> I think my mom calls the, the part of the, uh, under your chin, like, a the, the turkey waddle or whatever. Um, my best friend calls it a, a pelican. Um, but anyway, I'm just, I'm, it, it, it becomes kind of like not a focal point of the painting, but a really cool spot of just choppy brush strokes and unblended tone values. I'm like, it's light and it's dark. I'm not really dealing with anything in between. And you can see, I'm like, I'm adding stuff to the forehead, to the to the cheeks under the eyes. There I tried to throw in some olive green, but it didn't seem to get along so well with the primary red and the cool, cool blue. So I, I so I did, you know, blend it out a bit. And now here, here I'm throwing in the cadmium red light and you can just see it just pops. It just creates dimension and, and, um, vibrance. Doing a little suggestions of her hair underneath her rain slicker thing. Forgive the glare. I don't, I don't know how to fix that. Um, you aim a light at a painting, there's glares. And you can see I'm standing. I'm like, I'm chopping in these choppy little strokes. I, I don't want to, I want it to be rough. I want it to, to feel like there's movement, like there's energy. So this is a, uh, so I couldn't even sit down. I just needed to be on my feet and, you know, spar with the painting. Like they say, John Singer Sargent did. So anyway, here's the finished painting. It's an eight by 12 oil painting. And that's that. So that is how we arrived at this portrait of, um, I don't remember the character's name from Don't Look Now. And, uh, I hope you got something out of it. I hope you are, um, forgive the glare enjoying my exploration into style, into expressive brush strokes and all that. I encourage you to to try to find your style as well, and, and I'd love to hear about it in the comments section. So please do uh, like and subscribe, and I will see you again next Monday. Bye.